Welcome to Scary Story Podcast. In our stories, we explore a traumatic dark memory and the role it plays in daily life. Then fear arrives in our second story in the shape of a ghostly woman that waits for you in the dark. My name is Edwin. Here is a scary story. Seatbelt. I watched as the two kids that my friends brought over one afternoon chase each other in the front yard. Their parents were supposedly out for a regular doctor's appointment. Martina had heard around their circle of friends that Patty was about to get plastic surgery. Implants or something. I don't know much about that, but I didn't find it surprising. And definitely didn't find it worthy of what seemed like two-hour conversations with my wife every single day that past week. Martina stepped out to the porch with me, the two kids now rolling over each other on the grass. Hey, I yelled out. Rough play was out of the question. I felt Martina's light hand touch mine with that familiar, I'll take care of it feel she used to give me. I flat out had to ask Martina if she had thought about surgery herself, and I offended her, I'm assuming, since she gasped and then started telling me even more about how the procedures work and things like that. It is a topic I avoid, especially after seeing my own nose in the mirror every day. But I had lived with it almost all my life, and I was used to it by now. She was the one that had to see it every day, while all I had to do was avoid mirrors and I'd be okay. She then told me about what their other friend, I forget her name, said about the surgery that Patty was getting, and how they assumed that they were going to cover up the procedure, since, according to their suspicions... Patty would have to be looked after for a couple of weeks, and part of her body would be swollen beyond belief. Again, I didn't ask about this. It was just a thing that presented itself. It presented itself over and over, and eventually all of the useless information got into this brain of mine. Martina and I met with her telling me stories about her friends and her life in college. I figured that if she knew right off the bat what a terrible listener I am, she'd politely let me know that we wouldn't work and move on. And then I'd move on. Just like all those other times. But Martina was different. Sure, she talked a lot, but she also took my obsessions very seriously and in a strange way. I almost respected them. They weren't too bad, but I knew of the trouble they had caused me and my friends in the past. I couldn't have roommates because of the precautions I would take over everything. Spills in the kitchen were to be cleaned up right away. Shoes with non-slip soles to be worn at all times. No glass cups or plates or bottles. I try to get my vegetables and fruits pre-sliced to avoid using the only knife in the house. Martina used it most of the time. It was another thing with the nightmares. Things I simply couldn't erase. I haven't had the same dreams as often as I used to, but the memories are still there and they are not pretty. There's one that comes back in flashes. I'm sitting in the car. My shoes look small and untied. I look out to the window to see the blue sky. The window above me is tall enough so that I couldn't see what was next to me in the side of the car. That sky more than made up for it. Another flash. I look up towards the seat in front of me and laugh. Having the window open like that, the wind at the perfect temperature flowing almost like the texture of water over my forehead, and splashing behind my head and on the edges of my ears. A second flash. A girl, my sister, I think, sitting in the back seat with me, reaching her hand out toward me as I laugh at her face that she's making. My laughter dies off as I stare at a red rectangle, a button on the seat next to her. She laughs. I laugh again. She looks away to the window as the red button pulls me toward it, but when I press it, it doesn't move. It doesn't do anything. I feel disappointment, anger, almost. I press harder until I hear a snap. My sister looks down on my hand and smiles, then pushes my hand away. 
But just then, the car begins to shake, and I hear the screeching sounds of another car. Glass breaking. The third and final flash. I open my eyes, and I can see through the window now. The girl, my sister, is across the highway. Her leg bent the other way. But I can't see her face, and I can't tell if it's her. Her window is broken, and she doesn't move. And it is like this most times. Other times I hear men in uniform coming to get me. My mom and dad running toward the young girl in the highway. Blood runs down my mom's face. She picks up tiny white bones from the road and cups them in her bloody left hand. Sometimes I hear sirens. And others I don't hear anything. Then there's what I call the fictional memories. Things that I've heard over and over from my family, but I don't remember them personally. Though if I think back hard enough, I can kind of make up a scene in my head where this takes place. Doctors told my family that it would be better to wait while my face developed a little more. That maybe they could reconstruct part of my nose and ears. But supposedly they insisted so much that they eventually found a doctor that would do the procedure for me. And they were able to, quote... Save my face. And I can kind of see it. I mean, I don't know how much of it is true, but they put me on a bed with blue papery sheets. And I get wheeled over to a room with green tile walls. I don't remember much after that. I don't think my face looks too bad. The nose is crooked, and I like to say that it bothers me only a little bit. But I know. And Martina knows that it is a reason why I keep to myself most of the time. The reminder of that strange day and the roots of all these memories in that car, the sirens, and the death of my sister. We both sit there as Fred and Patty arrive to pick up the two kids. One of them comes up toward my lawn chair. Her backpack was next to my bright green Gatorade bottle. She says thank you to me. I say that she's welcome as she grabs her backpack with both hands and runs toward the sidewalk. Her white shoes hit against the grass as I hold back the instinct to tell her not to run. She opens the door for her little brother and he jumps in the car. and She follows behind him. Fred waves at me, points at his invisible watch as if to tell me that he's running late and can't stop by to chat. I don't need to chat. Martina stands up and walks over to their car, though. Maybe that's what Fred's signal was for. Martina can talk for a while. Patty waves at me as Martina takes a step back and turns around to walk toward me once again. As the car begins to pull away, I hear a familiar phrase. One that I hear sometimes in movies. Usually from dads. Seatbelts. The car roars away. That's when I hear the screeching sounds, glass breaking. I put my head down. Martina's soft palm rests on my back now. They're okay, she says to me. I turn my head up. Their white car is rolling down the street in silence now. And everything's fine. They are okay. The following story is called Wrinkled Woman, and it is about a phenomenon that affects many people across the world. The story comes up right after this. It must have been around 6 in the morning when it first happened, and I blamed it on the dark curtains that mom got me. They really threw off my sleeping schedule, with waking me up super late because of the light from the outside wouldn't come in, or too early, and for the same reason. I was sleeping, dreaming about I don't remember what, when suddenly, I heard the sound of a pendulum clock. My body instantly froze. I looked out over the crack of the window with the curtains. The thin line of light creating a wall of floating dust and orange glow coming from the outside. My eyes couldn't move. 
The body couldn't move. And I was stuck in a limbo-like state where I started panicking over my inability to do so. My breathing got rougher and faster. I tried to close my eyes, but the light was somehow still coming through and I could see absolutely everything. Everything, including a lump out in the corner of the room. Suddenly, I felt a twitch on my leg. It moved a little. I was able to turn my neck toward the dark hooded figure by the chair where my jackets had gotten stacked up. It then dropped to the floor and completely disappeared. I could feel my heart inside my ears. I stared at the ceiling, hoping that whatever had been there in the room with me was now gone. Next thing I remember, my alarm went off at 7.15 and I was wide awake as normal. Still, that image stuck with me and I didn't think much of it until I read somewhere about the woman who visits you in your sleep. I think it came from a movie or some type of old book that first talked about demons dancing on your stomach while you slept as it completely paralyzed you. I've heard about things like sleep paralysis, the old hag, and a lot of other theories regarding this. But still, I couldn't believe that something like that could happen to me. Mind you, the experience with the dark hooded figure happened back when I was still in high school. It was a much different experience back then. Some of my friends talked to me about it, and they seemed almost excited to hear that someone they knew had gone through something like that. So the first time I told them, I was very nervous, thinking that maybe they could see me as a crazy person. This time, I haven't shared it with anybody except for DMs with people from my groups on Facebook, and a few people that I've met through Twitter that have also gone through something like this. And if this has happened to you, be careful with what I'm about to describe, because I will try to be as accurate as possible, and... That's pretty scary. It happened about four years ago, and the dreams were recurring for a few weeks. Still, this was such a disturbing event that I had trouble sleeping for months afterward. And there was absolutely nothing I could do except give it time. I lived by myself at this point, and I had just gotten a full-time job, and I had my own apartment. A nice place in an older part of the city, no complaints about the place at all as I feel like it had nothing to do with what I experienced back then. I had gotten off work late that night, and I was tired and cold. It was about to start snowing, and I remember that from the radio announcement when I was cleaning up my desk for the weekend, so I was in a hurry to get home and turn on the heat since it took a while for the place to warm up, and I really wanted to sleep as soon as possible. I shut the door and got everything ready and got ready for bed. It must have taken me 10 minutes from the time I got home to the point that you could say I was drifting off to sleep. That's when I heard a familiar sound, but I couldn't exactly place my finger on it. Then the ticking became clear and suddenly I heard the chime of a grandfather clock. My eyes flashed wide open. I could see the purple light from the lamppost on the street coming through my window and that near pink and orange light coming from another direction. The ticking continued, and it sounded to be right next to me when I finally heard her for the first time. She laughed. She tugged at my leg and pulled it off to the side with the cold, dry feeling of a leather jacket against the blanket. My heart started racing. I heard the taps as she stepped to the other side of the bed, her sinister laugh still echoing through the room from all directions. My elbows locked when I tried to move them. Same with my knees. I tried to open my mouth, but all I could utter was dry breaths and the distant sounds of squeaks. I felt the cold grip against my leg, pulling at it toward the edge of my bed. It was trying to get me. That's when I felt a stronger pressure. The thing was climbing onto my bed. With my eyes straining to look toward my left, I was able to see the top of her head. That gray, tangled hair, in all directions, wobbled toward my side. Her eyes were busy looking around the room, glancing at me every time she scanned the corners of my bedroom. She laughed again. 
her black eyes looking directly at me now. The wrinkled face finally stretched sideways as her teeth, lots of them, spread across her face. Drool was dripping down the side of her neck. Her breathing sounded tired. That's when I felt it. The weight of her body against my chest. She pressed against my lungs as I felt a cold sweat across my forehead roll down between the side of my eyes and the bridge of my nose. It slid into my eyes, stinging, yet I couldn't close them. The wrinkled woman stared right at me, smiling. I tried with all my might to wiggle out from under her before she stood up on my chest. Her dark cloak swayed from side to side as she got her footing right. I started having more trouble breathing. I gasped for air to give one final push at getting my legs to move. With everything I had, I tried to kick at the air to get my body to react. And then... It worked. My leg moved. The wrinkled woman rolled off the bed with a loud thud and scurried off toward the corner of the room like a rat. I felt a tingling sensation in my arms, and I was able to turn my head. I turned away from the wrinkled woman and rolled right off the bed, tripping on my own blankets as I reached for the light switch. Only then was I able to look toward the corner of the room. Right there, where the wrinkled woman had been hiding, was an old black jacket. I picked it up threw it in the closet and got back into bed. The light stayed on for the rest of the night and for the following ones. Every once in a while I think about that event, and it would be crazy for me to say that I don't think it could happen to me again. Still, I know there's very little I can do about it. Tonight it could happen to me. Or... It could happen to you. Scary Story Podcast is produced by me, Edwin Covarrubias. For more horror, check out my other podcast called A Dark Memory, where I revisit dark tales and events in a storytelling format. I'll leave a link for it on the description of this episode. Also, be sure to click follow on your podcast player to get updates for this podcast, or you can also sign up over at scarystorypodcast.com to get an email every time a new story comes out. Until next time, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>